how should I cut this cabbage? Should I just cut it, cut it into half and then shred it? Or should I peel it leaf by leaf and then cut it? Is there a theory that describes what I want to do? Or is it up to me to decide and therefore based on what I did, I come up with a new theory? Today we're going to talk about inductive versus deductive reasoning. One of the misconceptions of many researchers is that qualitative study is always inductive reasoning. But today I'm going to share with you why this is not necessarily the case. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Let's begin. What are the differences between inductive and deductive reasoning in research? Inductive reasoning involves the construction of a theory based on an observation, and this is commonly known as theory building. And deductive reasoning, on the other hand, involves applying a theory to a specific observation to see if the theory is true, also known as theory testing. Now, there is a general uh, misconception that quantitative research is always involved deductive reasoning and qualitative research is always inductive reasoning. Um, I would say it is true that quantitative research is involved, um, does involve okay, deductive reasoning because it focuses on either the relationship between variables or differences or changes in the independent variables. And it is true that deductive reasoning is used. However, qualitative research may be using inductive or deductive. Now, generally, qualitative research uses qualitative data, so sometimes it gives people the impression that it must be inductive reasoning. However, we have to look at the research objective in order to decide whether it is inductive or deductive reasoning. Let me share with you a research that I have done previously. It involves the use of writing weekly learning diaries by some 54 uh, university students. And in the diaries, it has prompts in order to help the students reflect better their learning. The research objective was to obtain an understanding on how the learning diaries have help the students to improve their self-regulated learning. So the focus is on the understanding of the process, understanding of the learning. So I have used a theory to help me to analyze the data and to obtain an understanding. Um, the theory was self-regulated learning. So in this case here, I'm not looking at theory building. I am actually trying to see how um, this phenomenon can provide an understanding based on a theory. So a theory was involved. So in this case here, it was a deductive reasoning. Even though it is a qualitative study, the data that I've collected was qualitative data. But the reasoning involved was deductive reasoning. So the conclusion is that if it is quantitative research, quite definite, we can say deductive reasoning is involved. But if it is a qualitative research, we need to look at the research objective. We need to understand what the research is trying to achieve. And we also need to look at whether there is an underlying theory involved in analyzing the data and provide understanding about the phenomenon. So, if you really think about all these factors, research objective and the theories, it, it could be either one or even it could be both, where the analysis of the data have to go through two stages. The first stage would be um, deductive and followed by inductive. So in a way, there's a lot of possibilities. So what I want to encourage everyone is that always check the research objective and see whether there's any theories involved before we jump to the conclusion and say qualitative research has to be inductive reasoning. 
So I hope this video gives you some idea about qualitative research. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!